Her story was featured in the Gleaners Flare. Deborah Williams was diagnosed with breast cancer. She removed the lump, but chose a different route to continue her fight against breast cancer. Deborah is here to tell us why she took the road less traveled. Morning, Deborah. Morning. First Dee. of all, congrats. Thank you so much. Congrats, congrats. Thank Our you. story of inspiration. Let's start by so you had the lump. Yes. Um, for some time? Uh, I would say about four or five months. Mm. Hesitance to, to find out if it really was what no, you thought it was? No, busy. and couldn't get a chance to go to the doctor because I was traveling around the Caribbean at the time. Right. So yes. when you heard that this was breast cancer, what was that like? Devastating? It wasn't. And you see, I, I'm trying so hard to, to say that with sympathy because people keep saying, how, can, how not? Every other woman is devastated, but I was not mm -hmm. because I'm a Christian and my faith is strong. Mm -hmm. so I wasn't devastated. I just knew what to do to reverse it because mm -hmm. I had friends who have had cancer, persons who are surviving, those who have died from it. So I knew what to do. All right. So let's talk about this road. Let's travel. First of all, what's important is that before taking the road, you did the research. Yes. And I want to make that clear to the viewers because right. I, I don't want people to listen and then say, oh, I'm going to do it without mm. fully understanding what it is. Exactly. You did research and, and you determined what? I determined that cancer is almost like a virus. And it, it, is, it comes on you because your immune system has been breached. And so what you have to do is to reverse the damage that you have done to your body. Mm -hmm. And so having done the research, met women who have done the natural way. I decided that I'm going to do this also. All right. Now, your doctor said, Deborah, that's absolutely not the way. Um, that it may be a combination of yes. that, but chemo was important. You opted not to do chemo. Yes. Mm. My doctor was angry. I, I, if I was your doctor, I would have <laughs> he been was too. mad. <laughs> yes. How difficult was making that decision and sticking to it? It was an easy decision for me. And the main reason is my best friend came down with cancer in mm. 2006. And when he was diagnosed with cancer, I started researching cancer. And I saw him do the chemo and it didn't work. And then he decided to go the natural route. Now he has multiple myeloma. And normally within two years, you're dead. And this is now 2012. I'm diagnosed, right? I saw my friend go through cancer and I didn't change my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We all saw him. We were there. We saw him do the green juice and we saw him change his lifestyle. We did nothing. Because and you felt it, it, I don't have it, so I don't need to change what I'm doing. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a false sense of security that we all have. Right. You have it, but I'm okay. Mm -hmm. So when I'm diagnosed in 2012 and I'm faced now with something that my friend has gone through, I said, I'm going to go and do what he did. Because mm -hmm. I also had a book called Ministry of Healing by Helen G. White. I read the book and the book was very clear. There are eight steps to reverse any disease in your body, whether it's cancer, arthritis, diabetes. Eight steps. And it's called New Start. That's the acronym. Nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. It's the eight free physicians that we've been given by God, and I went on that path. It's so totally natural because the air yes. is, a, is a natural gift. That's how we have to preserve it, people. Yes. Water, exercise, and so on. It's interesting because um, we're talking about now in terms of dealing with cancer, but, but what I'm getting from you is you're also suggesting it's preventative. Exactly. That rather than wait until you get there, um, exactly. start building up the immune system. You throw away the microwave, flow everything yes. in the house. Meat, meat went. No, meat, meat went. went. Yeah. Microwave went. White flour went. White sugar went. Everything in a tin went through the door. Sure. And I went to Cornish and Market. Yes. And I started just shopping at Cornish and Market. And my, my entire diet changed. And as the diet changed, the first thing, my, I lost 30 pounds. That's the first thing. I lost weight. Then my skin and my hair, and I was amazed. And so now I started teaching other women to do this too. Deborah, I'm hearing you, but it's not easy. It's not First easy. First of all, I find the vegan diet to be absolutely tasteless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are ways to make it, it. But how do you get away from monotony? That's mm -hmm. the first thing on a, a, a diet like this. You know, people say to me, oh, but this is boring. And I'm saying, but hold on, how come you eat chicken four times a, a week? I you know, find it boring. So you know, the season the beans same your way. Curry today, uh, your curry today. Curry the bean today and beans through the bean next week. We have gungo peas. We have black eyed peas. Mm. We have split peas. We have lintel. We have kalala stew. We have pap choy. Hello. We have stew peas without the pork. Hello. We have coconut milk to spice it up. We have all that it takes to make it extremely attractive mm -hmm. and very palatable if we know how to do it right. And none of these are tin things as well. No, it's all natural. All natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't do the tin story. <laughs> no, no. And, and, and so you've done, you have a website. 
I have a website. So persons who want to share your story or to get recipe ideas? Recipes are all there. Articles about health and wellness is all there. And that came out simply. My website is, is a business website. Mm -hmm. And when I was diagnosed with cancer and I went on a radio station and I did an interview. And about five minutes after I came off the radio, my phone rang for three weeks. Three weeks straight with Jamaicans calling me about cancer or diabetes or obesity. And so I say, you know something, let me load up these things on the website. You're going to need to get five phones now after yes. you finish and smile, Jamaica. Yes. Before. I can't <laughs> tell you that. So, um, so, so you, how long were you on it before you went back to, to, to be checked to make sure? Because mm -hmm. that's also important, viewers. You have to know yes. that Deborah didn't just stay home and say, I'm going to go vegan and I'm going to be okay. She went back to make sure that she was. Mm -hmm. What time lapsed before checking and then finding out you were cancer free? Oh, it was nine months actually. Nine months? Nine months. Mm -hmm. When I started doing the program, because I was diagnosed in April of 2012, mm -hmm. right? And I changed my lifestyle and my diet completely. And I started doing workshops, just helping friends and just going to different churches and schools and just telling women, listen, you don't have to come down with this thing. You know, it can be prevented. Mm -hmm. It's not just about screening for cancer. It's prevention of cancer. And so I started writing a book. And in the book, I'm diagnosed, I'm, I'm telling them how God helped me, the New Start program. And in December, I finished the book, finished writing the book. And I'm saying, okay, I need to find a publisher and get this book published. And the Holy Spirit said, no, they're not going to believe you. Who are going to believe you that you don't have cancer? Just because you change your lifestyle and diet. And so I started checking around, is there a test in Jamaica that we can do to prove that there's no cancer cells in your body? Well, there's none. The highest test we have in Jamaica is a CT scan. Mm -hmm. That's, that can't prove definitively. And so I went to church one Wednesday night and I heard an elder saying that she was diagnosed with cancer. She went to Miami and did a PET scan. Mm -hmm. So I started researching the PET scan. And lo and behold, I, I went to Miami, did my test, and girl, when the results came out, we you ball. Jump up and we ball. Ba you ball. We ball. You're the ball to Deborah. I mean, I know you have a like ball, so. <laughs> oh, wow, that's amazing. But, but, but my producers ball into no <laughs> so you, you did the test yes cancer free but you didn't revert you no. still are yeah. on the diet and that's also important as well yes it, it, is it also important to to stick with it yes. to not say i'm vegan today and tomorrow i go and it's a good bust a stew peas yeah it's a good then, good yeah. point when i came back from Miami with the pet scan results and i went to see the surgeon mm -hmm. who had taken out the lump Right. And I gave him the results, you know, along with a copy of my book, Ministry of Healing, too. And I asked him, please, don't just cut these women's breasts off. Tell them that there's another way. I, I remember when I gave it to him and um, he was going through and he was trying to understand what was going on because he was very puzzled. Mm -hmm. I had stage 2B cancer, which means it has spread from the breast. It is now in your lymphatic system. Wow. That doesn't disappear it can't continue it, it can Anywhere. Right. Your lymphatic system is your drainage system. Right. So once the cancer hit that, it can be anywhere in your body and you don't know. Right. And so he says, Deborah, this is dangerous. You can't. How could it? It can't be gone. Then he said to me, well, all I can say to you is this. Whatever you did to reverse this cancer, understand you'll have to do it for the rest of your life. Mm. And I said to him, Doc, you finally understand the point I'm making. This is her diet. It's a lifestyle change. And that's where I left him. Uh, Deborah, inspiring to speak with you this morning. She's not going to leave us just yet. Neville is standing by because she's going to whip up some of the vegan. <laughs> I, see, I see some palm on. I see all kind of things over there waiting on us. So she's yes. going to whip up one of those wonderful meals for us this morning. But it's a powerful story. Her website is Deborah Williams. It's Deborah Williams, Williams JA dot com. com. So go out one, and check her one out. One question before you start. Yes. Why you got rid of the microwave? Because the, the radiation from the microwave damages cells in your bodies. The moment you turn that on, it's almost like a, an X-ray. And all that radi radioactive um, energy is extremely Just damaging. Just the fact that you turn it on or the fact that you put food in there? Both. Because you, if, if you read the instructions, it says when you're, when you're running it, operating it, don't stand in front of it. But most of us don't even read the instructions. So the microwave went in the garbage. No microwave. Buy a toaster oven if you need to warm up your food. And use a toaster oven, but don't use the microwave. All right. What would you know? Okay, we're going to make uh, almond milk, right? Because many persons say they have to use cow's milk. And I said to them, stop using cow's milk when a calf. The cow's milk is not better for the All right, <laughs> the come, let's go. All right, good. Tell me what you're doing. Hold on, so we need to plug in these things, don't we? Yes, we need to plug those things in. Okay, let's turn this off. All right, beautiful. 
So here we have almonds, right? And you know, we all love almonds. Now, one thing with almonds, when you're going to use it, you will soak it overnight. Soak it overnight. Soak it overnight, even if you're going to eat it. Yeah. Soak it overnight, next morning you throw it that water, and then you put this in the oven for about half an hour at 150 degrees, dry it back out, and you're good to go. Yeah, they were here for ride and whistle, you know. My ride right and whistle, ride right and whistle. So we have one cup of almonds, All right? right? We have two cups of water. So we'll put Where two. you got this from? You made up this yourself? No, man, this is all on Google. I mean, we must learn to do research now. Research. Right. So two cups of water. And we use filtered water. Never ever use the water straight from the pipe because it has in chlorine. And that's not good for you. And then, no, what I do as a sweetener, and it's not absolutely necessary, but we're whistling and riding. Yeah. Two tablespoons of honey, right? We cover back the blender and we press on. And we're ready. And you notice how white it's becoming? So yeah. we're getting almond milk. Okay. All right, so we blend it for a couple of seconds. Yeah, that's it. And that's it. You that's done? It here? Yeah, man. I mean, mind you, you need to do it a little longer, but for well, time. I don't know how much longer you need to do it. A couple more seconds. Well, do it. All right, do it. Seconds. All right, because yeah, we want the almonds seconds. to be completely gone. Yeah. So you don't see those chunks. All right, so we run that. All right, now can you get this strainer for me, please? What about banana and stuff? You can add something yeah, like that? Yeah, yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to, okay, normally at home I don't strain it, but just for the sake of those who don't want the pot, you just strain it off. All right. Now I want you to taste it. Yeah, you taste it. You're going to get some more, no worry. You want to carry or something? Check that first. So that is a plain milk, right? What's the name of it? No. That's almond milk. What's the name of the... What are you drinking? It's almond milk. No, what's the name of the drink yes. overall? Debra's it's almond milk. Concoction. Just almond milk. Now Debra, here's what we Debra's do. Concoction. We're taking two things at a one. So we have the milk, right, for the children. No, we're not throwing away um the residue right because we're using the almonds so what we do i'm using my hand but you know you just take two banana right mm -hmm. one because we're using up our jamaican fruits we always use our jamaican Hold on, fruits no. so this is a different drink this from... is a, yeah this is now a smoothie so this is a complete meal now so let's say you're coming to work and you're busy you grab two banana you grab an almond can you pass a knife on me please i can pass the knife thank you sure. so much you, you grab a papa <laughs> right you open up your papa you know what's the seed pack? Can I have the spoon, please? You can have the spoon. Thank you very much. Let's take the seeds out. And by the way, papaw seeds are very good for getting rid of parasites and worms. Then why are you taking it out then? Because it's bitter. But you, you take a teaspoonful like this and you just take it. Yeah. Yes, don't throw and it away. Bitter? It's bitter, but it's so good for your body. It get rid of parasites and it gets rid of all of those nasty. Worms. And again, you knew this how? On the website, I just researched. Okay. Now, having done that. We add now a tablespoon of pumpkin seed. And my gentlemen who are watching, guys, log on to your pumpkin seed. It's extremely good for prostate. So that's like two tablespoons of pumpkin seed, right? We put that in there. And then now we blend. Again. Yes. So now we have two things that we made out of one. The almond milk. Now we're making a smoothie. This one that went straight, we're going to drink it straight. It's a complete meal. All right. No, right, we your have glass. To, we have to run now. So again, all we right. can Google all of this. You can Google all of this. Then come, no, we don't have to go that right. fast. Okay. Okay. <laughs> they look like you want to carry home this, you know. No, I want you to drink all of that. I must drink all of it. All this. of it. That's your breakfast. She's a cancer survivor. <laughs> Her name is Deborah Williams. Thank you so much for coming. Great oh, story. Thank you so and thanks much. for sharing all of this with us. Thank Fantastic you. Fantastic story. God bless. Thank you. On the other side of the break, we change lanes a bit, folks. The church and gay marriage. Cheers. Soon come.